what is happening with my hair <laughs> jesus okay so good morning <laughs> um as you can tell my voice is still quite bad it's been bad for like over a week now but today i'm just going the lighting so you can see i was just about to go take the dog for a walk i don't know what's happening with my hair but i was just about to, to go take the dog for a walk and um i got a parcel but normally when I open a parcel, I know um, I've been opening it by myself. And then I've been doing videos, doing like PR opening things. You'll see it, if, if it's already from my channel, you'll start by now. But if it is, I will leave a link down below. If not, then it is coming. I've got like quite a few that I need to film. I filmed one, I need to film another one. And I might even need to film another one because I've been getting quite a lot of stuff. Anyways, this parcel has just came from the hook group from HQ Hair and it's come in this like huge box to begin with but it's came in this absolutely stunning bag and then inside here loads of goodies I've only like opened like took three things out so far I was like okay yeah I need to vlog this because the goodies are too good to miss out on so the first one we have is a Angel Tangle Tees I'm sure it's from Tangle yeah absolutely love this colour and it's a little one I've got a huge one so this is going to be good to put in your handbag or you know, if you're traveling or anything, be good. I've, I've actually not got a hairbrush, so that, that has come in handy. Don't even ask me how that's happened. <laughs> and then the next one is a Invisi Bobble, the Tracer's hair ring, and I like that it's the nudie color. That's shakes you. I'll pop them down here for now. <laughs> and then we have the Bubble Purifying and Charcoal Face Mask Sheet. And it says it's meant to clean pores, exfoliate and brighten, refine pores and detoxify. I'm excited to try that because I've never known one that's been charcoal and bubble. Yeah, I'm excited to try that. Oh my god, look at these! Then we've got some Ardell Wispy Lashes. These are the 113 ones. These are right up my street. I like the look of them. What else have we got? Oh my god! <laughs> I've always wanted to try one of these. This is the Brushworks Teardrop Miracle Silicone Sponge for flawless blending. This looks really good. And then we have, oh my god, I've never tried anything from um, First Aid Beauty. So this is exciting. Caffeine matcha, ooh, wake up wipes. I don't I need this this morning, as you can probably tell by my voice. I'm at an event tonight, so I need as much energy as I can. So the design for morning, pre-workout, or whenever your skin needs an energy boost. The facial cleansing wipes are infused with matcha green tea, caffeine, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, and aloe to put the spring back into your skin. Oh, I'm excited to try it because if you follow me on Instagram or Snapchat, the day that I'm filming this is the day after I went to London. So basically, I'm spinning you around whilst I'm talking. So basically, I went to, I won a competition basically with W7. I'm going to take my coat off now because it's I'm getting a little bit hot. <laughs> basically, I went to London with W7. Um, yesterday, I went to London and back in a day. And if you live in Middlesbrough, you know that is a lot to do in a day. So yesterday I got up at half three in the morning. I had like three hours sleep. I was still awake at half twelve. So God knows how, how much actual sleep I got. Um, yeah, so I got up at half three. And then got the train at five to six in the morning. Went and picked my friend up because I was allowed to take a friend with me. So I took Amber with me. Went and picked Amber up in my car. Drove us to the train station. Got the five to six train. Changed over in York, went to London, got there at five past nine. So that was like three, three hours on the train. And I went round to W7 all day. So there was me and Amber, another girl who won the competition and her friend. And then we got to meet, um, we spent the whole day with them. But obviously got to meet Stephanie Lang, if you don't know who she is. She is like a massive YouTuber. Um, I used to watch her way back she, when she lived in Australia um, and I found, I remember finding her on YouTube for all of her do's and don'ts videos um, and she's, I didn't, I didn't realise she's moved to Ireland now so how crazy that that she's like moved from Australia to here when most people, like Blake for instance has always said that 
he wanted to move to Australia because like the UK is naff <laughs> kind of thing so yeah I thought that was really fun to meet her Olivia Buckland was there as well and went around the whole day with us um she was both of them absolutely lovely I swear down if you'd if you didn't know who Steph was I don't know if she likes being called Steph I'm gonna say Stephanie just to to be safe <laughs> if you don't know who Stephanie is you would never ever ever think from when I spent the day with her yesterday you would never ever ever think that she was a million like subscriber youtuber you would never think that because she I mean I'm not I'm not expecting all big youtubers to be like thinking that the famous and big I am are so important kind of thing but I just I don't know I, I expect them to have the same kind of not persona as a celebrity but the same kind of I don't know I just didn't I didn't expect I can't say it about about trying to like stereotype big youtubers but I just didn't expect her to be so humble and so down to earth like same for Liv as well Liv was unbelievable you would never think I mean there's a big difference between Liv and Stephanie even though they both got the same huge following Liv's got like over a million people on Instagram Stephanie's got over a million people on YouTube even though they've got the same following I just didn't I don't know I didn't expect I didn't expect them to be how they were but I also didn't expect them to be bad either like I expected them to be to be normal like normal people like us like like peasants like me <laughs> but no I expected them to I expected them to be normal but I didn't I didn't expect them to be I don't know they exceeded my exceeded exceeded my expectations can just put that out then I don't know they were just so humble so down to earth you just think I know they are normal people but like the fame and the money and everything to do with their big following hasn't gone to their heads at all and that was so nice to see because I've never met um, a big YouTuber before ever so for me to meet her and her be like my first one I hope all of the rest of them are like that too I don't think, the, don't think all of them will be got an email where I don't know where my phone is <laughs> but I don't I don't I don't know she was just she was unbelievable like so nice and she said to sorry I'm expecting a phone call from the BBC long story <laughs> um I'll talk about it if it actually does happen <coughs> but um yeah I'm expecting a call from them about something that could potentially be happening but it's still in the pitching stages um, they contacted me to see if I wanted to be involved but I'll talk about that another time if it actually happens because I don't want to get excited and then nothing actually happened but um, yeah I just didn't I didn't expect them to be even more amazing than I thought they would be and that the fame hadn't got to the heads or that I don't know they were just such nice people and she put me in amber very very quickly and um, we like managed to get into her vlog and like I said hi in it obviously I didn't say like my name or anything like that I just was like hi <laughs> kind of thing um and she said that she's gonna put mine and Amber's YouTube channels in her like description for the video which is like that is amazing and do you know what I, I'm gonna go into a rant now about yesterday but do you know what I really liked about the fact that um she doesn't say us, I mean, obviously I know, like, she doesn't, I don't always say it, she doesn't see other YouTubers, not like me and Amber at any competition to her in the slightest, not at all, but do you know what I mean, like, she doesn't see other people as competition, like, she was, she knew that we did YouTube and stuff, like, when we were talking to her about all of that kind of stuff, um, and she knew that, like, we were into that kind of thing, and that's what we did. And instead of wanting, instead of thinking, oh, like, more people do on YouTube kind of thing, she was, she, she was willing, like, wanting to help and wanting to, like, put our names in 
the actual video, like put it in the down bar for like her followers to look at. I think that's amazing. Like even if she just puts it in a video and I get one extra subscriber, that is one extra person that I can bond with, I can talk to, I can love, like I love the rest of you. So, like even if she doesn't, even if I don't get a subscriber from her put me in the video, I can still say that I'm in Stephanie Lang's vlog. Like, yeah. And I was in Olivia's Snapchat, like Instagram story yesterday as well. So clearly I took a picture of that and put it on my story like, and I was, I'm like this tucking into my food. <laughs> she was sat right, like literally right next to me and Amber when we were having our, our lunch. Basically what we did is we went to an animal shelter because W7 had brought out a whole vegan range um, and we went to an animal shelter for Blue Cross, well no, went to an animal hospital with Blue Cross um, went to the London one. I don't know if they've got any other ones. I'm not too sure. I will have to look that up. But I will leave links to Blue Cross and what it's all about in the down bar because it is a charity and it's for people who can't afford to put their pets into like a vet. Um, <laughs> I nearly rhymed that then. It's for people who can't afford vet bills, which I absolutely love. I think that's amazing um, because everyone should be entitled to their vet getting, everyone should be entitled to their pet getting like looked after and obviously if you know me you know that I come from a working class family who I live in an area where we don't have much money um, I live in an area where there'll be a lot of people who will I mean there'll be people who have loads of money who also absolutely adore their pets too um, but what I'm trying to say is I live in an area where people absolutely would like absolutely adore their pets like unbelievable amount um but if something happened to the pets I uh, I know that most people would not be able to afford it especially the area that I live in um so I I love things like that because obviously I know it's in London so it'd be more catered it'd be like obviously for people down London kind of stuff I was I was absolutely amazed by what they did and that it's all like charity work and because obviously there isn't an NHS for pets that's just how it is, there isn't one. Um, so it's always up to you. And I mean, touch wood, nothing ever happens to my pet. Um, if you know I have a dog called Kaiser, if you see me when I'm at Blake's house, you know that Blake's got a dog as well, um, called Hank. Um, my dog's a Staffy, Blake's dog is an English Bull Terrier. And he's absolutely lovely. And um, Kaiser's. I was in the kitchen, I was thinking, I bet he's trying to get up on someone's bed upstairs. <laughs> um, Kaiser's absolutely amazing, and he's a really old dog, Kaiser. He's nine, so I touch wood again, nothing will ever happen to him. But we've had we've had a lot of, of things that have happened to him that obviously scare you, and one of the things that my family would talk about is how are we going to afford it, like how are we going to... Like we need to do any everything that we possibly can to be able to afford this to help him. And um, we went through a scare before where he had like a lumpy, still got it now, like a lumpy tissue on his neck. It's kind of like underneath his collar, so his collar kind of hides it. Um, so then that scared us even more because we were thinking, well, if the collar hides it, how long has it been there for? Because obviously he's been hidden underneath his collar. But we went to the vet and it was fine. Everything was fine. It, it's just like lumpy fat tissue kind of thing. It's not like there's nothing there, we had it all like looked after and stuff. Um, but that was, obviously we took him straight to the vet, but whilst you're there you're thinking, how are we going to afford this? Like, it needs to be doing, we can't just leave him, like it's not fair, we absolutely love him, he's part of our family. Touch wood again, I don't know what would happen when his time comes to go. Um, touch wood again, <laughs> better to be safer, sorry. Um, Oh God, I, hope, I, hope, I hope dogs don't understand what you're saying because um, it sounds it'll sound really horrible because they will to hear me. But yeah, obviously it, it, it is costly and you know, especially for people whose their dogs are their life. And I mean, don't get me wrong, Kaiser, we absolutely love him. He's part of the family, love him as, as if he is part of the family. But how much I rely on Kaiser is completely different to somebody who is homeless on the street who only has a dog. So like, for instance, I have my mum, Blake, like my dad, my mum's boyfriend, Mark, 
well, fiance, I always forget to say that bit. <laughs> They've been together for like years, but she's like mid east dad. Um, I've got friends, like I've got loads of people that I can talk to, like touch wood, so lucky that I have people that I can talk to. But for instance, if you're homeless and you're on the street and your dog is your only kind of companion, the only person that you can speak to and who like you love and he's there for your day in day out, it's it's it hit you, it hit them, don't get me wrong, it'd it, it really hit me if Kaiser passed away, touch wood again. But my feelings probably wouldn't even compare to somebody who is homeless and has a dog and that is like their everything. Don't get me wrong, I love Kaiser. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I think you know what I'm trying to say. But yeah. I don't know how I got into this tangent. I think I just, I went to that animal hospital yesterday and I just felt really, really passionate about it. And like the fact that it's obviously all charity work as well. Um, and obviously the reason that we went was because the makeup range is a very vegan range um, from W7 Cosmetics. So obviously it's all animal, like cruelty free and everything like that. That's why we went to the center. Um, that's why we went to the hospital and W7, donate money like two to three times a year like big lump sums to the hospital so obviously we were going to see like what their money was going to and the difference that their money makes and how much the hospital need money I think he said to me like obviously when he was talking us through it all he said that it cost four million to run the hospital and out of the four million it's like four point some I think he said like four point four million to run the hospital and out of that amount of money to run it, only 200, 300,000 of it is um, given from the people. Because basically when you go and get your, when you take your pet to that hospital and you like get them a checked up or uh, whatever that they get done, you have to make a donation. So even if you can literally only give like a five pound or just like something daft, you have to donate something. So even if you if you were homeless, you'd have to donate like, and I reckon they'll, they'll, they'll even take like a penny off you because it's just any donation. And um, they, I mean, surely they would because, I don't know, I think they would because that's the whole point of them. But you have to make some kind of donation to the charity and out of all the donations that they get from the people who take their pets to it. God, look how, I forgot to take my eye makeup off last night. I just took, what is this by the way? <laughs> I just took all my, like other makeup off and left my eye makeup on. But basically out of all of that, 200 to 300,000 out of 4.4 million is donated by the people who actually take their pets to the hospital. The rest of it, the rest of it is from charities. So it's like from people who are like W7 who make lump sum donations, people who do fundraising, people who do, um, you know, like parachute jumping out of planes and runs and all that kind of stuff that's what it's for and um, that's what that's what makes up the majority and runs the majority of the cost for the hospital so yeah i don't know how i got into this tangent but i just feel really passionate about it i will be doing a video when i talk about the makeup range i'll add in clips of like the day and stuff i didn't take any pictures in the hospital i didn't vlog it I took my camera to vlog but i didn't vlog it I just didn't feel, I didn't feel right to vlog it. I didn't think I should have vlogged it. Um, and my whole intention was to vlog it because obviously it was an amazing day. Such a, such, obviously, like a once in a lifetime opportunity because it was a competition. It wasn't like I got contacted because of my YouTube or anything. Like I generally won the competition for mentoring on Instagram. But when I got there, I just didn't feel right to vlog it. I don't think that it was the right place to vlog and I thought it'd be quite rude to vlog too. Yeah, I decided not to and I think that was the best choice because I think it would just be very, very rude to vlog there and to be honest with you, I wanted to enjoy the experience. I wanted to like, take the experience full on and listen to everything when we were talking to the vets and everything like that. I wanted to actually show an interest and not just be sticking a camera in the face i wanted to i wanted to see it without seeing it through a lens that makes sense i didn't want to be like oh here is this here is this here is this i didn't want to be like that i wanted to to 
see it myself and to be there in the moment, feel the moment. Do you know what I mean? I just, I didn't want it to be like, and this is this, and this is this. Yeah, just wasn't about that life. Today I'm going to an Urban Decay event, by the way, so because I've talked so much in this, in this little clip that I wasn't even intending on filming, because I've talked so much in this, I will do the Urban Decay event. If I get quite a lot of footage for that, I will, I will film that um, in a, for a separate film, like, separate vlog. I'll do a separate video on it. But if not, then I'll put some clips in at the end. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, back to my little box. Because my dog will start crying soon because I was going to take him for a walk. So, we have... Oh my god, look how cute! We have... Okay, so I don't what happened there, but I was in the middle of trying to pronounce this. I don't know if it's Imi or Imi. This is a styling gel. Hold level 3. Hmm. That sounds interesting. I'll have to look that bad boy up. Ooh, what's this? Oh my god, no way! This is the Vita Liberata. Liberati? Liberata? Is that how you say it? I don't know. <laughs> this is Mar Marula Dry Oil Self Tan. SPF 50, that's it. Oh my god, that's really good. It's a 3-in-1. Gradual build tan. Instant bronze colour. Wow! Oh my god. Treat your skin with non-greasy marula. Did I say it? Marula? Oil. Tan your skin with Eco Kurt DHA. Protect your skin with Advanced Broad Spectrum SPF 50. Apply to skin in long circular motions for tanning. Allow at least one hour before rinsing. For optimum tan, result with eight hours. Wash hands immediately after use or alternatively use a tan of mitt and then this is must be the mitt for it oh my god i am so excited i am oh wow thank you so much for sending me that that is amazing i'm gonna try and put it back in like relatively pretty like it was when i got sent it 